There are three sewing hacks or sewing tips or sewing tricks, whatever you want to call it, that I've learned from my mom. She's been sewing for over 20 years and that's how I got the love of sewing in my life. So mom, thank you so much. This video is for you. And hey guys, if you've seen these hacks or if you use them, give this video a thumbs up. And then at the end of this video, once it's done, if your mom, your aunt, your grandmother, your dad, your grandpa, if they are the people who brought you the love of sewing, go give them a hug. Share this video with them and tell them thank you because they are the ones who are carrying this craft through and who are passing this craft along the generations. All right, let's get started. This is seriously going to blow your mind. So for this first hack, what you're gonna need is two writing tools, a pencil and a pen, two pencils, whatever else works, whatever you have around the house. Take them together, put them together, make sure that they're even on the surface and then take a scrunchie, a rubber band, a scotch tape, whatever you want, and you gotta tape these together, again, making sure that they're even on the surface. Now, if you've ever sewn with patterns that don't have seam allowances, Borda style lovers are out there who are just not sure how to deal with those sewing patterns, this is going to be your saving tool. Also, if you ever wanna make your pattern just a tiny bit bigger, this is also the way how my mom used to do it. Put them down, and the next thing that you're going to do, you're going to outline the pattern, and guess what? The second pencil or pen is going to create a bigger line. If you want to make it bigger, just put something between the two writing tools that you have. That is going to create a bigger line. Super easy. So you just lay your pattern down on top of the tracing paper and trace it around, creating a seam allowance that you wanted. I know you're ready to ask, Alisa, why are you holding a protector sheet? What in the world? Well, guys, this is actually one of the questions that subscribers ask a lot. So, Glenn, this is for you. If you ever sew with plaids, stripes, checks, gingham, if you ever do repeating patterns, geometric patterns, or anything that you need to make sure that they either repeat or don't repeat on certain pieces of the pattern, this is where the protector sheet comes in play, and it's going to save you so much headache. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cut this part uh, away, and you're gonna cut open the bottom. Now, if you lay it flat and if you put a little thin cotton cloth on top of it and if you iron it just a tiny bit on a medium setting, it's actually going to flatten it a little bit. And the next thing that you're gonna do is you're actually going to trace your pattern with a Sharpie or a marker on top of this protector sheet. If you need to tape more together, tape more together with a scotch tape, no brain, they're there. And now, when you're placing your see-through pattern pieces on your fabric with flowers, is repeating patterns, geometric, anything else, you can actually see what are you doing and how easy it is to match everything and to make sure that it either repeats or doesn't repeat. So another tip and trick from my mom. Now this is my favorite because I use this a lot. I make a lot of silk scarves, chiffon scarves for myself as gifts. It makes a great accessory, but I know a lot of people shy away because it is a pain in the butt to work with these slinky fabrics that move all over the place, especially when you want to make a really nice square scarf. Cutting those really nice straight edges Edges, it really is a nightmare. So my mom taught me a trick. Instead of trying to draw a straight line with a chalk or maybe a heat erasable pen, and I know a lot of you will say, well, just make a notch and then just rip it apart. Yes, that is also the way to go, but it distorts the fabric on both sides by about an inch and a half, and then you have about three inches of ruined fabric because you will see the threads will move towards one side and it just it's not the look that I want to go for. And if you're working with really expensive silks and really expensive fabrics, you definitely don't wanna waste three inches on both sides of the fabric that costs a lot. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna find one of these little loose threads right over here and you're gonna pull them out. Now, you might need to pull out three, four, maybe five. It's not that difficult, but what it's going to do is going to provide you a really nice clean line that will be your guide on cutting this piece of fabric into a perfect square. You know, my mom also taught me how to be super resourceful when it comes to sewing. I mean, she made me dresses out of curtains, out of old jeans, out of whatever else was available in 90s and post Soviet Union countries, and she made some amazing stuff. So I really wanted to take a moment and pass it along. Guys, if you're new here, click that subscribe button. Check out these other videos that you see on your screen. I would love to have you as a subscriber on my channel. I hope you learned a lot, and if you did, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to go and give a hug to your mom, your grandmother, your uncle, your aunt, whoever else taught you to sew. All right? Well, guys, thank you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.